Hi, this is Amelia and Elizabeth, and we are here with David from the Night Flight Orchestra. Thank you for having this interview with us today. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. So how's everything been going for you? That's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> um, these past 18 months, I mean, they've had their ups and downs, but um, I mean, we're about to release our new album now on September 3rd, and it's so, and that's a big thing, obviously, and I'm really excited to see what people think about it, and, and you know, it's a tiny cause for celebration, <laughs> and yeah. we need those these days. <laughs> yeah, we definitely do. And um, as you just said, you have your new album coming out. It's the second album of the series, so what can fans expect? And also, did you expect to do a second album to this series? Well, it wasn't something we had planned from the beginning, but when we assembled the songs for this new album, Aromantic 2, it, it like logic continuation of the themes from the first Aromantic album, and, and you know... And we kind of liked the title, Aromantic. It was something that Bjorn came up with, the singer, and, and uh, it just felt that it was uh, just like the two previous albums, Amber Galactic and, and Sometimes the World Enough, had sort of like a, a space theme in common, albeit loosely. Uh, these two albums have this more like down-to-earth, aeroplane, atmosphere, stratosphere thing going on. Sound-wise, they sort of inhabit the same territory in a while in a way so so it just felt like yeah they sort of like belong together even if the new one takes off in various new directions as well i mean we always try to surprise people or have at least a couple of you know new elements uh, to incorporate a few new elements with every new record we do so everything we've done from the first first album up to here is it's been like continuous process of you know developing our sound and you know trying out new stuff and you know, branching out in various odd directions and what was your writing and recording process mostly me uh, i write i guess more than half of the songs and lyrics and then bjorn Usually does the rest, and Sebastian usually has a couple of songs too, and, and so we have some rough demos, and then we just meet up in the studio, all of us, and that's where the, you know, uh, we have, if I might say so, I think we have a quite special chemistry in the band, like us musicians, and, and the whole recording process is very spontaneous, and, and we all have our unique voices on our instruments, we want that to shine through, we've always, like, engineered and produced all of our albums ourselves, so it's very much a, a group process it's a very spontaneous organic process and it's all about the group dynamic and the fact that we're still we're still great friends it's always lovely to ha hang out with each other and we it comes very easy it's not like we sit around and plan stuff it's more like oh let's press uh, record and see what happened <laughs> you know and what was the inspiration behind the album cover just like the previous album the romantic it's i guess it's a bit like nostalgia for the first imperial face of commercial air travel like when people were being able to fly from europe to the us on a commercial airline and that whole 50s era it wasn't for everyone because it was really expensive but still had this romantic shimmer to it one of the main themes behind the band and our image is, has always been about you know traveling escaping you know and flying away from stuff or flying two stuff <laughs> there's something special about actual acts of traveling and flying and um, so i guess it's uh, the cover is just you know it's a female pilot and we like to have that aspect too too like to get rid of the macho stuff that still rears its ugly head way too often in, in rock music and metal music and it's nice to you know have that a tiny little comment on the state of the world and I noticed in a few of your video clips, you actually have the female um, pilots in the yellow outfit. So that's really cool. No, yeah, absolutely. Um, and you also released a game for your album. So what inspired this? I actually played it this afternoon. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I guess it, it's more like we, we try to... Um... We want uh, we want to create this like parallel universe or, or our own little world. So it's not. I mean, the music is is always the the main thing, but it should be more than just the music. We want to have some sort of theme. We want to have <clears throat> visual content and you know games and you know stories and and if you want to, you can like go 
deeper and just immerse yourself in the world of the Night Art Orchestra. It's all about helping people to escape the everyday grind and the bleakness of everyday life. And, you know, it's all entertainment, but we like to think it has some depth to it, too. And definitely, I think everyone can relate. Like, when you go on tour, right, you get away from it all. and you... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> it's It's been a major change for touring musicians obviously i mean we're lucky in that we've been able to i mean we're all swedes and we haven't had like strict lockdown rules so we've been able to see each other in studio and we've been able to physically meet up and and do stuff the way we're used to doing them as opposed to just sending files back and forth over the internet So, so um that whole thing with you know playing live and you know doing shows that's a whole other aspect to it that we're missing right now but we're hoping to eventually. I hope things will things will ever go back to exactly the way they were before the pandemic. But perhaps something, perhaps at least being stable enough so that we're able to go out and play shows again. And you know, we're just waiting around in standby mode and see when it when and if it's going to happen. I mean, we've had lots of tours and festivals booked and everything is always getting postponed over and over so i have no idea when when it's going to happen but i mean nevertheless we'll, whenever it happens i mean we won't stick around just waiting for that to happen we will continue to write and release music and you know keep up our online presence because i think it feels like as if uh, our fans appreciate the fact that we're releasing music putting stuff out there and and um, i think people need new music now more than ever we can tell that people seem to listen to it more than people are streaming our music more than ever and we're getting more views and you know seems like there's a void to be filled and since we can't fill it with live shows we try to do it by creating new stuff what differences in artistic expression and songwriting do you see switching between soil work and night flight orchestra in some ways it's the actual songwriting process it's it's pretty much the same i mean it's all music in a way sometimes you just for me songwriting usually starts with you know having an idea it could be a a melody or a a word or a sentence or a concept or whatever you just get something in your head and you want to you know create something out of it and it's usually quite obvious from the beginning if it's if it's a soul work idea or if it's a night flight idea i mean the the major difference it's you know with soil work we still have to stay within some sort of like metal context we can't really do a you know bossa nova song with soil work whereas with night flight orchestra we don't have any genre boundaries we can do pretty much whatever we want to do so that's the main difference but it poses a different challenge i mean i love writing metal songs or song work trying to do something new and interesting but still within the metal idiom and with nitrite the the challenge is more to since you can do pretty much whatever you want the challenge is to exploring new stuff and, and taking things even further out there without but still trying to keep the same nightlight orchestra feeling to it even if you go off and do something really <laughs> strange <laughs> that you should still be able to identify that it's us and if you could have any band play one of your songs what band would it be what song would it be and would it be in your style or their style oh i haven't really thought about that but i guess i'd love to hear perhaps a, a really good female country western singer like casey musgraves or someone like that interpreting soil work and nitrat orchestra songs that would be cool. that would be interesting <laughs> <laughs> i haven't heard of her but i'll definitely check her out yeah so what's your favorite memory watching someone else perform live can you tell us a story yeah i mean i mean i don't go to concerts that often obviously because i'm usually playing a lot of concerts ourselves so yeah. but i've I think one of the the best concerts I've seen when it comes to rock and metal was uh, we were playing Tuska, which is a festival in Finland, and I saw Electric Wizard, which is one of my favorite bands, doom metal band from England. They did a great show, and on the side drops they had like Italian 70s vampire porn movies going on (laughs) during the entire show, and it was a really great performance and really had this real great atmosphere i love their songwriting and their whole image and so that was probably one of the highlights that my favorite 
like a good experience. Yeah, otherwise my favorite concerts of all time have been, you know, jazz and fusion concerts because that's some, something I really listen to a lot. But that's more just, you know, you're just there for the music. It's not much of a show, uh, much of a show just, you know, a bunch of people playing. But that's, you know, to me, that's really fulfilling seeing people who really masters their instruments. Most rock concerts, I find most rock and metal concerts quite boring, to be honest, because it's, you know, it's just a lot of, posturing and, and you know, trying to look cool and but anything that's intense I, another show that was really good was uh, watching the Dillinger Escape Plan a couple years ago in, in Czech Republic in a festival that's also a really special experience so they were a real great live band so I've seen lots of big bands like huge bands that are quite boring to watch because yeah. you know if you get too big you can just go up there and you know cash in the millions and play your hits and everyone will be happy anyway so uh, i think the best shows are by bands who are still like getting somewhere and then really trying to you know reach the next level because then that's when you're hungry and that that's when you have something to prove well i love how your music taste is so diverse that's really cool and um last question is there anything else you'd like to say to your fans yeah i mean we really love australia we've been there with solar quite a few times playing and that's always a great experience and, and so I guess I just hope that as many people as possible in Australia check out a new record and, and that if they like it they tell their friends and enemies and loved ones and hated ones or whoever <laughs> that they should check it out too because I mean eventually would love to be able to come down there and, and you know do some shows in the future because I think it would, for every album we make, it, there's more and more media interest. We make, we're doing more and more interviews. Hopefully, there will be some sort of bus going, and eventually, will a promoter will think it's worth bringing us over. Uh, that's the same. Uh, it's the same over there. I mean, America. It's, it's um, you know. It's such a huge country, and and you know that's also a thing. I mean, we'd love to go there. We'd, we've been playing so many tours in America with with sort of work, and, and but I guess you need to reach a certain level before you can go overseas, and because of, it's all down to finances, which sounds really boring, but you know visa costs and flight costs and everything, and and you know you have to reach a certain following and reach a certain level before before it's doable, but. We're doing all we can to, you know, promote ourselves and, and hopefully the world will spread in, in, in Australia and, and the US and everywhere else in the world. And, and I mean, we've been doing some, some great tours and festivals in Europe, all over Europe, Europe with my Heart Orchestra and it's been going down really well. So, so uh, and once we get enough of a following overseas, we'll, I think it will do well everywhere basically so it's it's just a matter of hopefully reaching out to as many people as possible and, and getting them to hear our music awesome thank you so much for this interview today we really appreciate it great thank you all right have a good day you too okay, take bye. care